Hey everybody, welcome to the next episode of Smashified. I am Omni and with me is Chris. Hey guys. And Michael. Hello. And you are looking at the next character, which was actually supposed to be after the one that we originally planned to be next, but instead it is now, and it is Bomberman. And Bomberman is a personal favorite character of mine. I've got a lot of fond childhood memories from playing some of his games on the N64, as well as the GameCube, so... It was also interesting because this is one of the characters that I actually drew during the Wake for Brawl. I was back in, say, 2007 or 2008, and I actually did a fake Smash Brothers Dojo update that was featured on the Mojo, for those of you who were on the Insider forums back in the day. But yeah, this design is largely based on Bomberman Generation, but there's also obviously a lot of design elements that are shared from all of the older designs from Bomberman games. And it was awesome being able to collaborate with Chris on it. He brought a lot of interesting ideas to the table. So, yeah, I think it turned out pretty well. As you're looking at it right now, it's just a sketch. And we wanted to kind of, like, bring in some design elements to kind of modernize it a bit. Make it feel a little bit like Mega Man in comparison to his NES design. They added a lot of, like, mechanical-looking details. So I thought, what can we do with Bomberman to kind of bring in those those sorts of elements into it. So we thought maybe the pink parts of his design could be just like see-through and Chris was talking to me about uh, like the old Game Boys and stuff like that with uh, like the transparent uh, outer shell. So that's one of the references that we had. And that was fun to do because we ended up actually using some 3D elements in there, but you're not going to see that for a little bit here. But how did you like this one, Chris? Bomberman was super fun. He's totally cool. Like you said, we were going back just kind of seeing what we could accomplish compared to your older version from the Brawl days. And I think we succeeded really well because we, like you said, looked at Mega Man and said, what's, what did they change about his original uh, NES design? Quite a bit. I mean, it's cool because if you look at the Mega Man from Smash Wii U versus the actual sprites from the older games, uh, Zoom it out, they're like the same sort of silhouette and everything. They captured the character really well. And that's yeah. something that we wanted to totally do here. And I think I think it looks great. Yeah. <laughs> so looking at this foot here, uh, I wanted to kind of, kind of design a mechanism that allows his toe portion of his foot, I guess, to bend if, if he was like walking or something like that. And uh, Theoretically, it's wrapped in like like a silicone sheath of some kind, like a semi-transparent silicone sheath. Yes. I think about like uh, some iPhone cases are like that. So that's one of the things I had in my head when I was drawing it up. And well, it, it's actually a very common thing nowadays with just sort of robotic technologies. Is yeah. they'll have all these like gears and you know uh, things moving underneath this sort, like you said, silicone uh, body structure. So it looks it looks like a if in Mega Man's point it would have. I mean, I'm, yeah, I guess Mega Man too. But in Bomberman, it's like all this stuff's going on underneath the surface, but all you see is this really cute like uh, squishy bubbly stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It was actually funny, we were talking to Andrew in the chat, and he wasn't actually aware that Bomberman is actually a robot. He's not like a <laughs> weird-shaped human. And the same goes for Mega yeah. Man and Astro Boy. Like, they look like small people wearing suits, not really like robots. But then you see these diagrams and this promotional art with all these gears and stuff like that, so... Yeah, I guess that was a big thing in the 80s, It's like yeah. little, little boys who are actually robots. <laughs> especially in Japan. <laughs> yes, so, especially. Yeah, I didn't know Bomberman was a robot either. Yeah, oh, there you go. That's what Andrew said. He's like, oh, I, th I thought he was just an astronaut. <laughs> a weird looking <laughs> astronaut, yeah. yeah. Yeah, everyone who goes to space has black shaped heads. But anyway, yeah, this is fun because you're, you're painting in now and it's just a quick base, but it's already starting to come together. And it's like, this this was, again, like Shantae, it was kind of one of the quicker ones we did mm -hmm. um, because we had, we were, we were playing around with design elements and like material elements, but um, the idea was already there, so. Yeah. Oh gosh, what was I going to say? <laughs> wow, I already forgot. Somebody say something. <laughs> sure. So, um, talking about this part, like the feet and everything, it was a lot of fun. Bending joints, uh, squishy tissue. I don't know. <laughs> 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 no, like I really had a lot of fun. Um, it was a lot of fun to 3D model. This is Omni doing a quick version where he wanted to try and like paint an example for me so that I could see what we were aiming for, sort of. It was his idea originally to do this sort of under the coat um, robotics and now this is me where I'm going in and just kind of 
try to reattempt it just to get again the idea of what it might look like I, I, the, we've been doing a lot of uh, sort of educational stuff for ourselves lately just like taking a couple moments to set aside just like thinking about materials and I think it's been creating a nicer product in the end because we spend more time on it and it actually could fun function possibly yeah yeah and we're about to see here what you started doing in 3d whoa and uh so this is the first time we're seeing your 3d process yes. uh we've seen andrew's already but yeah uh this is what what is this maya is this, this is maya yeah no it was uh pretty straightforward i just took a couple spheres cylinders started laying in the shapes getting the topology to look nice and uh wanted to repeat that sort of um the foot shape that we had in mind uh the nice uh joint with the bent toe it was it was interesting to think about because i'm not much of an engineer <laughs> yeah um so then this is me just rendering it out in Keyshot. I have that bubble overlay and I was like trying to figure out, oh, how is this gonna, what materials and presets or even my own uh, settings could I use to make it look like the bubble? And I was having a long, hard time getting that, which is weird. Um, just because the way Keyshot works, it was like thinking that, like I could set the outer bubble to look like a bubble, but as soon as I put the foot in it, it got a little like confused and it thought of it as like this really dark object. I don't know. But yeah. uh, once we got to the painting process like this, I then redid the paths and tried to match everything up to best I could in the actual in the Photoshop file. So right. uh, that's what you're seeing right here. It's it was a fun process. Yeah, that's really good. Thanks. And I think uh, one of the things that uh, I've noticed on Twitter when people are requesting things is that they often say stuff like uh, you should make the next character so-and-so and I don't think that many people are aware of how our pipeline works so I kind of wanted to clear that up a little bit but basically sure. we have like several characters in the works at any given moment like some of them are just in the sketch phase some of them are getting fleshed out some of them are just concepts and then some of them one, are in, one in particular we have a final 3d actually two we have final 3d models and rend not renders but pretty close materials and everything for yeah them. but we're one is going to be the next one and then another one we've kind of pushed back for a while but yeah we'll see. we have a lot already planned basically and for the music, uh, if you didn't see the little credit thing at the beginning, this is actually something that both Michael and I worked on together. And it's the first time I've really collaborated heavily with somebody else in music, which is a lot harder to do in music than it is <laughs> with art because everyone uses different <laughs> audio workstations and it's it's kind of crazy, but it was interesting. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Uh, it was yeah, like, why it was, we, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, no, it was like definitely different because um, you like use like a lot of dissonant notes, so they like, kind of like work around that because you, you you started it and you're like hey i'm not sure where to go with this so you like kind of yeah gave it up for grabs yeah i i got a lot of inspiration from the uh bomberman hero soundtrack which has a lot of really weird uh rhythmic dissonant tracks in it there's a lot of like perfect fifths just going up scales and it's like all kind of weird but mixing that with the typical kind of stuff i like to do with uh inspiration from music from splatoon and stuff like that uh, I like blending as many melodies from as many different source materials as possible. So this actually contains stuff from the original Bomberman and Bomberman Hero, Bomberman 64. Super Bomberman. Super Bomberman. And that's part of the one that you added because I didn't yep. really know anything about Super Bomberman, but that was a really cool contribution. And uh, Are you guys actually big Bomberman fans? Have you played the games? I've played a good handful of the games. I played Generation on the GameCube. I played 64 and Hero. Um, I'm not a huge fan of the um, the music in Generation. I think it's a lot more mm -hmm. generic sounding, but Hero and 64, I, I go back and listen to those soundtracks every now and then. It's really fun to listen to. Yeah, I played Hero and 64 as well. I think I played the original like on some emulator or something. Mm, yeah, there's a lot of different, uh, like the original top-down style of the Barman game. There's a lot of like parodies of it. Uh, they made that Bomberman Act Zero game on the Xbox at one point, and that was just strange. And I, mm. I, I want to pretend it doesn't exist. <laughs> See, that, but, that was de clearly a robot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> but uh, I really wish Bomberman was still prominent these days, but ever since Hudson closed down, we don't really see anything from Bomberman anymore because the rights went to Konami. So. Well, maybe Konami's ramping up for something really good, and they just need like a sort of like render or current version to pop up online and <laughs> sort of rejuvenate it all. If only that would be <laughs> magic. Did it, guys, <laughs> yeah. Bomberman. 
I wonder if this is going to affect the Smash ballot vote at all, but I don't know. I, I don't know how prominent yeah. his his vote is these days. Like, I don't know. I don't see as many people voting for him mm -hmm. or a lot of threads about him or anything like that. So Yeah, I think it was more, uh, more asked about uh, during the pre-brawl days. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I saw a lot of people with Bomberman and their signature on the Smash boards and stuff like that. But someday, one maybe we'll see one. I really want him in Smash. I, I keep I keep dreaming up these moves that's for him. Yeah, he's so perfect for it. I, I liken him to Snake in that I imagine he'd just have like one attack that just drops a bomb on the ground, and then all of his other B attacks just determine what you do with any bombs that you have on the ground already. So, oh, Omni, you just mentioned Snake. That's bad. Oops. <laughs> You're gonna request him now. <laughs> well, who knows what's happening with that franchise? But here is the uh, slow pan up. Money shot. <laughs> lots of details. Lots of scratches. Lots, lots of, of cool weird textures. Materials. Yeah. Robot. That's awesome. Cream. And there nice. he is. Ooh. All right. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. And if you want to see us do other stuff, then you can follow us on Twitter. All of us have handles. Um, there's also a lot of other Smashify videos that you can check out. So click on any of those thumbnails. You can also listen to Michael's music, check out his channel. He posts a lot of stuff, all really awesome. And if you're on Tumblr, we do have a Tumblr page where we post all of our updates. So feel free to follow us there. And if you like creating your own Smashified artwork, we do have a DeviantArt group, so you can submit your artwork there and it can get featured. You can find links to those in the description below. And if you want to suggest characters, then you know what to do. So thank you guys. See you next time. Bye, everybody. Stay golden. Oh, I should stop recording. <laughs> <laughs>